Hello and welcome to Autosport's tech review of all the exciting Formula 1 designs and developments we got to see in the Bahrain test last week. I'm John Noble, F1 editor at motorsport.com, and with pre-season running now done, teams are pouring through the data to try to get their cars in the best possible shape for next weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix. But apart from looking at their own competitiveness and working out what they did, they're also going to be looking at photographs of the other teams to find out what they did and they're doing with their cars, especially any clever tricks have emerged that can be copied as we get into the season. Somebody else who's dug through all these images is our tech expert, Matthew Summerfield, who's joined me today for a look back at some of the more interesting aspects of the 23 cars. And there's definitely plenty to get our teeth into with some cheeky front wing ideas, different side pod design concepts, the floor changes, and of course, a few updates coming down the road. So Matt, welcome. Um, did you enjoy the test? And what stood out for you as the most exciting element? Yeah, I mean, of course, I enjoyed the test. It's the first time during this season that we've seen the cars on track and obviously that's really important from the technical side in order that we can get a gauge of what's changed between last year and this and obviously the first time that we've seen all 10 cars uh, in a racing environment so plenty to uh, scratch our way through in terms of the technical side of stuff uh, looking at 2023. So let's, let's go to front wings first. This is, I think it's been kind of one of the big talking points of pre-season. We had the, the Ferrari launch car with those slot gap separators that have been, Mercedes are told, couldn't run last year, but Ferrari are running. Then we've seen Mercedes run that kind of Miami end plate design that was a bit of a talking point too. We thought they were banned. Some people thought they were banned, but they're actually allowed, aren't they? Can you just talk us through those, those two key elements? Yeah, okay. So the first thing is obviously the Ferrari front wing and those slot gap separator brackets, which have an aerodynamic function. Now, as you mentioned, Mercedes introduced or looked to introduce those at the back end of last season, as far as they first appeared at the US Grand Prix and they intended on racing them in Mexico. Now, that was part of a larger upgrade to the front wing. And in the end, because of the arguments that ensued, Mercedes decided not to run those brackets and the rules obviously have since been changed to allow them and that's why we've seen them on the Ferrari. Uh, Mercedes suggests that they don't actually offer a huge amount of performance but I do think that we'll probably see a lot of the teams move in that direction down the course of the season because at the end of the day the teams are looking to create that outwash which is why we've seen Mercedes sort of reinvent their end plate and front wing flap design uh, even though we obviously thought that would uh, have gone the way of the dinosaur as well going into 23. I think the the other interesting thing we saw on the front wings is these these little kind of mini winglets have appeared on the inside of end plates. Um, Obviously teams are pushing to find any downforce and thing they get. I think think Haas, Red Bull and Mercedes have done this, haven't they? They have indeed. And Mercedes obviously have got that as part of their larger scheme. As we've already mentioned, the, the wing that they introduced in 22 in Miami uh, allows for much more outwash uh, than the rules really intended. And that's why the FIA looked to try to close that loophole down with the new regulations. Uh, the new winglets that have appeared on the Mercedes sort of helped to uh, improve the effort of the changes that have been made in that regard because Mercedes do have that design still just albeit with the new regulations dealt with in that respect and then obviously as you mentioned Red Bull also have a similar winglet in that area and so do Haas. Now this is something that the FIA didn't really intend to happen because of the problem of outwash and the way that that has an impact on overtaking. But obviously the teams want to get that back. You know, they didn't do it in the first place because it wasn't adding performance. And so even though the regulations are trying to prevent that from happening, they will still try to to get that outwash effect back uh, to generate downforce further down the car as well. Front wings are always an area of massive kind of development. We see teams pushing the boundaries all the time. What else has stood out for you in terms of what we've seen so far on front wings? Uh, The other interesting solution that we've seen, uh, not only on the Aston Martin, but also other cars is that uh, like Mercedes the teams are looking at the way in which that the front wing flaps and the end plate interact with one another and how that they can force uh, the outwash concept back into uh, the you know the the usage uh, going forward so Aston Martin have sort of detached their rear most element and they've got some metal support brackets to turn that uh, outwards and allow for the outwash whilst also maintaining uh, the, the flexion uh, that's required under regulations as well. So I think that's going to be a really intense area of development throughout the course of the first part of the season at least while teams try to come to some kind of convergence on what is the best solution there. Yeah, talk about convergence. I think one of, one of the themes we've seen coming into 23 is, is side pods. When, when these cars launched last year, lots of 
interesting ideas and it they kind of whittled down to three now we've had the the kind of the, the in wash that ferrari with their, their bathtub side pod the down wash that red bull pioneered and the zero pod yeah i mean last season obviously we had a huge amount of variation in the side pods and that was really interesting from the perspective of it allowed us to see that there was more possibility in these regulations than perhaps uh, anybody really envisaged uh because we thought they were going to be far too prescriptive. As you mentioned, this season we've really got down to three main concepts, uh, that being the downwash solution that we saw on the Red Bull, Alpha Tauri and Alpine initially, and then other teams started to converge on that during the back end of last season. And they've all sort of adopted that solution uh, as we've gone on. But then we do have uh, the, the Ferrari solution, which is the bathtub, which obviously Haas has also got a very similar solution there, which you kind of understand why they've taken that direction direction uh, and then obviously we've got Mercedes out there on their own uh, sporting what I would call a half a pod more than a zero pod this year just based on the fact that they've added some extra bulk to the length of the side pod. I think from what we hear from Mercedes the zero pods going something news coming probably the more the Red Bull direction so we'll be down to two but it's also that seems to be developing too doesn't it as well Alpine's doing this interesting kind of development path with, with Gullies. What are they trying to What are they trying to do there, and how's that How's that developing? Yeah, I mean the Alpine Gully concept is something that evolved during the course of 2022. Uh, I think it's sort of a half mixture of both the uh, Red Bull downwash style concept and the Ferrari concept, in order that you. Uh, gain some efficiency from the losses that you have upstream and obviously other teams have picked up on this as well and they've started to run similar concepts this season uh, such as Alpha Tauri and probably the most prominent being the Aston Martin because theirs looks like it disappears into the the core of the earth such as the depth of their their gully at the the back of their side pod so a very interesting development and again something that I think we'll see develop throughout the course of the season as teams make gains in their uh, CFD and wind tunnel simulations. Another thing you can't help but spot with these 23 cars is is the engine shelf I think think it first appeared on the Red Bull the middle of last year this this kind of long flat area that that runs along the the side of the power unit Um, what is that shelf doing and why have so many teams pursued that concept? Yeah, I mean, again, it's an area of convergence. It's an area where we're seeing teams look for, for more performance. And to be honest, it was actually more Alpha Tauri and Mercedes that started that sort of concept and was developed upon throughout the course of the season. So we saw um, Red Bull obviously make that big shift during the course of the season. Alpine also moved across to it. And as part of the course, obviously, Aston Martin, who had a very similar sort of design to Red Bull, moved there as well. So... What they're attempting to do there is deal with the losses from the cockpit. We've obviously had the introduction of the halo several years ago, and that has an in- impact on the flow structures uh, downstream towards the engine cover and then onwards to the rear wing and, and, and so forth. So all they're really doing is looking to break up the areas around the rear of the bodywork and improve the flow structures rearward and obviously create more downforce. So I think we'll see more of that continue throughout the season as the teams look to, to make gains They've, they've obviously moved in that direction but there's probably still more to be had there as well we can't talk about the cars without covering off porpoising um i think we saw a little bit of it during the test but i think more of that was to do with teams taking the setup to extremes to try to induce it to work out where the, the boundary layers were in a bit to stop the porpoising this year the floor edges have obviously raised by 15 millimeters um what, what have you seen about the impact of this having on the design and how are teams trying to get around this loss of downforce yeah, I mean, I think, as you mentioned, obviously, the, the teams were pushing set up during uh, the test, which you would expect them to do to try to find the limits of, of where they are. I think a lot of what we saw was more to do with bouncing than it was actually porpoising. Uh, so that was more to do with set up than it was obviously the, the ill effects of an aerodynamic uh, problem. Uh, but in terms of the improvements that we've seen already, on the floor edge, I think is the the most important aspect. You know, Red Bull have perhaps perhaps got the most developed version uh, of the the, the floor edge itself. And I I see that is going to be a major, major development arc this season is teams trying to overcome the changes that the FIA made and recover the losses. In fact, they've probably already recovered those. They're they're obviously still looking for more performance though, because that then leads into creating more downforce from the underfloor as well. Also, the F1's development race never stops. And I spoke to Matt Harmon on the final day of the test, and he said there's a significant upgrade coming for Alpine for the first race. I'm sure they're not alone in bringing new parts. 
we don't know what's coming. They won't tell us until they appear on the car. But where do you think the key development battlegrounds are going to be in F1 this year? I think the areas that we've already mentioned are going to be key. Uh, the areas around the front wing to generate more outwash because now we can see that there are some areas in the regulations that the, the teams can poke at in order to get that extra performance. You've then obviously got the floor edge, which has changed not significantly because a lot of what the teams already knew can still be applied, but they're going to be applied in different ways. And then obviously you've got the convergence in other areas such as the side pods uh, and the engine cover shelf. So uh, this is going to be a huge amount of development throughout the course of this season uh, but it, it'd be very interesting to see how the team sort of converge on those ideas and where the new ideas appear in order to gain more performance over their rivals thanks for that matt have a great week and i'm sure we'll be catching up probably on thursday actually to talk about all the latest tech developments that we finally get to see again if you want more tech insight from this channel please let us know below because we do read every comment posted We'll be back soon with our own performance review video, looking at just what these tech updates did to the lap times and how each team compares. So make sure you click the subscribe button and be sure to join us for that. Thank you for watching. <laughs>